Should you disclose having children or planning on having children during grad school interviews? Let's briefly talk about it today on this episode of Navigating Academia. What's up, everybody? This is your personal academic mentor, Dr. Jay Phoenix Singh. Thank you so much for watching today. We're gonna keep it brief. Uh, the question at hand today came from a very valued viewer, so thank you so much for uh, being willing to ask it. I know it's a very sensitive subject, which is basically, should you disclose having or planning on having children during grad school interviews? Um, I have three very simple points to be able to make today. Like I said, it's gonna be a short video. Um, the first point is that at least in the United States, so, so definitely check out in, in your local country, local culture, in the United States, they can't legally ask you that question. That's important to know. Okay, if they do ask you that question, I want you to email me and we're gonna talk about kind of next steps on that uh, because that is highly inappropriate. They cannot legally ask it, number one, okay? Number two, it is none of their damn business whether you have children or whether you want to have children. Now, if that's an important part of your life and, and you're in an interview and you want to talk about it, you want to talk about your kids and so forth, I think that I think that's wonderful, right? And definitely do it if that's an important part of your life and you want to disclose it, all right? But that's your business. It is not their business, all right? Uh, and last but not least, the last thing that I want to say is that we talk a lot sometimes, not on this channel, if you guys haven't watched them yet, I think they're good videos um, that are all about uh, budgeting and financial planning and investing for people in academia, including grad students. Um, and so what I want to say here is that just like we financially budget, there's many times in life, and this is an example of it, if you're going to make a decision to be able to have kids during grad school, uh, I, it doesn't matter if you're going to be a mother or father, totally applicable, um, that we need to also take into consideration what I call emotional budgeting. Uh, Grad school is one of the most stressful things you're going to do in your life. First year, I always tell you guys, first year of grad school is going to be one of the best years of your life. And then the second year, the shit hits the fan. It's remarkably consistent. Uh, the one thing I tell people, take a look at the comment sections of my videos. You'll never see anybody disagreeing with me, right? Uh, it's just the case. 44% of women, 38% of men develop anxiety disorder or clinical major depression during graduate school. Really sucks. Have to admit, happened to me as well. If you're going through it, watch the video on the channel about going through depression in grad school, okay? So you need to emotionally budget. If this is already going to be insanely difficult, right? You need to emotionally budget. If you do want to have kids during the program, uh, that you need to consider that it may take you a little bit longer to be able to get the doctorate. Usually you're going to have up to something like seven years to be able to complete. And I know that so many of you who are getting into programs, especially really good, reputable programs with great names, uh, you're a real go-getter, right? You're somebody who, in terms of your personality, is probably a type A personality. You're really driven. you got an amazing GPA and the undergrad. And the idea of you taking longer to get to your dream is brutal. And so because of that, you want to do everything all at once. And I don't blame you for a second, but it's very important to me that you be okay going through this. Uh, not only if you don't have kids, but of course, if, if you decide to have them as well. And I don't want, if you're already a parent, for you to lose beautiful years, beautiful time with your children. One of the ways to be able to do this is just to be able to consider and emotionally budget for doing things a little bit more slowly. And this is certainly something that is possible. Instead of taking an average of four to five years, take the six to seven years. Space things out a little bit. Instead of taking a huge number of three credit classes, this is how it's measured in the US, three credit classes, you can go ahead and take half the number, right? Or a third fewer, and you will still be okay. I promise you. You can also sometimes do summer semesters if your doctoral program doesn't usually offer them. Just take a few. Go through this thing at a pace that is appropriate for you and is appropriate for your family. You guys know that I am a family first person always. And it's very important for me, especially if you have kids, to be able to make sure that you are the best parent possible because I know that if you're watching this video, you are an amazing parent. So God bless you all. Thank you so much for watching. If you need personal, not personal advice, who am I to be able to give personal advice, frankly, on something like this? But if you want to talk about it, 
right? Please never hesitate to get in touch with me. You can reach me at www.gradschoolapplicationcoach.com. And as I always say, thank you so much to our sponsor, Publication Academy. If you're interested in learning how to be able to publish in high impact factor journals, as well as how to write grants successfully, please check out www.publicationacademy.com. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for stopping by, everyone. It's a pleasure to have you here as always. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more in this series on navigating academia, please click on one of these links over here to be able to view more original content. I hope to see you there.